how these spaces and some of the, the projects that Brandywine has executed take into account thinking about climate change, thinking about storm risk and other elements as part of this design process. Uh, sure, and, and, and I think to follow up on those good comments, you know, it's, whether it's a public space or a private space, particularly relative to the public space, you want a high degree of functionality. You want it to work. Uh, so I think that's where, I think as you heard from every panelist, you need to have, you know, as collaborative a process as possible to kind of get to a unifying vision. Like, what, what do you want the space to be? How do you want it to be used? How does it fit into the context of the community? Uh, and come up with that kind of overall vision of, of the direction you want to head in. And then I think you really need to bring in a lot of talent to the table. You know, I mean, one of the things that's great, I mean, if you're a really good developer, you're really a historian. I mean, we're not the first people to build buildings or the first people to uh, build parks. I mean, there are great precedents for parks all over the world. Uh, whether they be pocket parks or major uh, public spaces. So we spend a lot of time after we kind of come up working with a unified vision, what the execution strategy is. And uh, we spend a tremendous amount of time thinking through what other precedents have done, what other cities have done, whether it be in, in, in neighborhoods or business cartels, because I think the, the biggest mistake you can make sometimes when you're actually building something physical is that you think you have all the answers. Uh, arrogance is, 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 the, is, the, is the enemy of good design. So uh, we always believe that if you go get the right people involved, you have kind of some unifying design principles, and you, you're thoughtful about each stroke of the pen of what you're going to build, needing to be mindful of its functionality, how it fits into the fabric of the community, and then also what it will cost to maintain. You know, uh, every time, every building has a roof. Everybody who owns a home or an apartment understands what it costs to maintain things. So the biggest mistake I think people have made in public spaces is, is they design something that's either not functional or they don't have the resources to maintain it properly. And then that creates something that is not additive to the community versus something that really is a value-added proposition. So, and I think, look, it, you know, there's so much of focus, you know, to your, 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 your last point, Laura, uh, of sustainability, uh, climate change, impact on communities, the whole range of issues. Like, I think you've done a great job really articulating how important health is. That's a real driver. Uh, it's not just stormwater management. It, it's, it's what you can do to kind of create the lowest impact or something that actually has a positive impact on, 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 on the climate. And that's a key part of, I think, uh, all of our ESG work as well as all of our design decision making. Great. Now, I, I, when you talked about bringing designers to the table, Taya, this is what you do. So it would be great to hear your perspective on, on Jerry's comments. Yeah, I mean, good design. Um, one, I think we need to stop using the phrase good design. Um, I think it's something I struggle with a lot. I think a lot of people have very different definitions of what good design means. For many years, it has been elevating like sort of major architecture firms or architects. Um, and it really has centered around the identity of, of a single human being, right? If you think of a lot of the, the famous firms, it's like one old white guy's name. And I think uh, now that when we're starting to think about what design really is, it's this really uh, interdisciplinary, I always say, design's a team sport. You need lots of different consultants. You need lots of different people to have their say, have a say in the process. You need to hire people to do your community engagement, your facilitation, and do it in a way that's like transparent and ongoing and not this like stagnant, finite thing at the beginning of a project that only lasts for three weeks in a project schedule because that's not how you build trust. And I think that's really hard because right now the way we've defined good design for 400 years is really around a finished product and having a finished product that lives on a wall in an art museum. Um, and I think that until we start to break down some of that just as a phrase is, is a really, uh, so we're gonna continue to struggle with a lot of the things that we're talking about here. Um, but I think bringing the designers to the table early um, is really important. I think oftentimes these become budget decisions. These become project control decisions where people are trying to either um, not 
spend too much money or not bring certain voices into the table because they know it might change things in a way that makes the schedule unruly. Um, and I think that's really hard. And until we get to uh, more integrative design processes and it, it's something that isn't seen as a luxury product or something that you only do when you have that like one really interesting cool project and it becomes sort of the, the baseline standard. Um, I don't think we're gonna see a big ton of change and we're not gonna see all the, the things that Jerome is talking about because for me, everything he's mentioned should be included in the definition of good design and right now, it depends who you talk to. <laughs>